Hello and welcome guys. Thank you for joining me again for another night of Facebook Live. Also, I want to recognize those that catch the replay from YouTube and or SoundCloud. I am your host and Tricia Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. It is indeed a blessing to be here with you tonight. And tonight we're going to talk about insomnia. Now, this is a new topic that uh, we're bringing to the platform tonight. And uh, I'd like to have some of you guys' feedback uh, on uh, how your life has been impacted uh, by insomnia or if there's someone uh, you know. If there are any remedies that you have, any natural remedies, or what it is that uh, you have found, what treatment have you found that is helpful if you are one that has uh, been impacted by insomnia. Now, for those of you who are just joining me, and as you join me, please like and share this video. And for those that are catching me on the replay from YouTube or SoundCloud, please uh, also like and subscribe to my channels there as well and as always if you enjoy the content that we bring to you every night at 10 p.m. please tell a friend or a loved one share it on your timelines and let's get the word out so that more people can benefit from uh, what you hear and see through this platform every night so insomnia. Now I'm not an expert at all when it comes to discussing the issues as they relate to insomnia, but I thought it necessary to bring this topic to the platform tonight because for someone who uh, deals with insomnia or have issues with ins insomnia, we know that the impact of COVID and the pandemic and everything that has been going on, we know that that could have some bearing issues on what we already find challenging. And so I saw a post today when I was surfing social media that uh, mentioned something about insomnia. And I just kind of uh, laughed it off and made a joke about it and said, you know, I sleep fine at night, you know. But then as I got to thinking about that, you know, I didn't know if that was the way I should have really looked at the post because we know that some people really have issues with insomnia. Now, when I say insomnia, I'm talking about the ability to fall asleep or the inability to stay asleep once you have gone to sleep. So... Insomnia is a challenge or a sleep disorder where some people find it difficult to sleep. And we know for, for some of us that really don't have that issue, we know that sometimes, yeah, we find it a little challenging to uh, go to sleep. We seem a little restless or something like that. But that's more of a cute situation. What about those chronic situations where people suffer with this day in and day out and they're always feeling tired and sluggish and and when they do uh, sleep it's not a quality of sleep and they find themselves up throughout the night so that becomes more of an issue for a lot of people and with uh, the pandemic and all these things that are going on we know that any medical condition that we do have can be heightened when you have uncontrolled issues like COVID and uh, then uh, coming in and changing our whole lifestyles and routines and stuff like that. So if you're here with me tonight and you have a remedy or a treatment that you know uh, that could help someone who may be watching this video or listening to the replay that has an issue with um, insomnia, I would like for you to leave that remit or that comment there in the comment section because that is going to be helpful 
for others that may uh, log on uh, to to know that uh, some of the things that maybe you have tried to help you fall asleep. Now, being that I don't know a whole lot about insomnia, I, d I did a little research today. And one thing that I find that most of the research uh, talks about is it says that some of the issues we have with the inability to fall asleep and to stay asleep has to do with our intake of alcohol and or caffeine. So for those of you that are like me, you know that uh, every day you have to have your daily fix of caffeine. And, and there's a lot of uh, foods and um, drinks that we consume throughout the day that contain a high level of caffeine. So that would be one area that I would encourage anyone who would have an issue with insomnia to take a look at. What are we taking in? What are we consuming? So if it's a high level of alcohol or a high level of caffeine throughout our day, if we could kind of manage that a little better, that would be my first suggestion for starting. Let's see, Miss Rice says, a lot of people say that when they read the Bible, uh, they fall asleep. Okay, so this is a suggestion from uh, one of our viewers. They're saying, if you read the Bible, uh, that could be something that could help you fall asleep. And being that she mentioned that, in the research that i done today, it said if you read something that is boring before bedtime and when you're feeling tired, that it will help you rest and fall asleep. Now, what it also suggests is that you not read while you're in the bed. So what it said is for you to go to the table or go to the living room or someone somewhere else to read that content. And so, uh, and it also said don't read something that you enjoy reading. It said read something boring. So if, um, the Bible is challenging for you to read, or if you have other books around that uh, you may not have a lot of interest in, but you, you take it out to read it, it wants it to be, it suggests that whatever you're reading is boring because it won't stimulate you to stay awake to want to read more and more and more. And so I think, uh, Ms. Wright, when you mentioned that about uh, people saying that the Bible helps them fall asleep is because it takes a lot of thought to process, to understand what it is that some of our uh, Bibles are saying. So to comprehend that. And so what that does is probably uh, makes us a, appear more tired at that point. So I appreciate you uh, sharing that uh, resource uh, with us. So for someone who is watching this, or hear this on the replay, that is a suggestion, is that you read something. And the suggestion here is the Bible, or I'm suggesting any other thing that you have laying around the house that you really don't have a high interest in. And that uh, could be a treatment, non-medical, that could help you uh, with your issues at the, as they relate to insomnia. So uh, remember, don't read in the bed. It suggests that you get out of the bed and read uh, from another room. And so uh, I don't know why that is, but that's just what the research said today that I came across. Another suggestion that uh, my research showed is that you have a more routine schedule. A more routine schedule. What that says is 
you're not sporadic and all over the place and uh, running here and there and having your mind uh, so distracted throughout the day. They said that distractions is another cause for people to suffer with insomnia. And what they're saying is that we have our phones or electronic devices or something with us everywhere we go, including into the restrooms. So there's not a time throughout our day that our minds aren't wired or distracted. They, say in, they said that just laying that phone down for a couple minutes while we go to the restroom and take that time in the restroom to just breathe and meditate for that couple minutes could help with our issues as it relates to insomnia or the inability to sleep or the inability to stay asleep. It says that we're so distracted by everything that's going on that we don't give our brains time to process real issues that show up when we lay down for bed and when it's time to sleep. So they said, said take that couple of minutes away from the phone into a restroom where you're all alone and allow those couple minutes time to just process and worry and whatever it is that is on your mind at that point. And they said by doing that, you allow your brain to take a rest and it's less likely to bombard you when it's time to sleep. And I thought that was interesting, but true enough, we are so overwhelmed throughout the day with distractions. If it's not social media, it's games on our phones, it's the kids, it's it's our job, it's the demands that we have pulling on us. And we don't have time to think. And when it's time to think, we're drowning it with caffeine, we're drowning it with substance, we're drowning it with alcohol. And again, when it's time to lay down, we're so wired every which way, it's hard to find that place to rest. So again, if you're listening to me tonight, I want to know what you have found helpful or what you believe to be helpful as a treatment for acute or chronic insomnia. Because we know that uh, when we go to the doctor and things like that with these issues, we know that the first thing they want to do is medicate or uh, research and, and all that. I'm not a big fan of uh, medicine, of that kind of medicine. Now, herbal uh, medicine maybe, you know, depends on what brand and, and, and what, what its claims are. You know, I'm more likely to control things with diet and exercise and the natural things. But uh, medicine that adds more stimulants and side effects and things like that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of that. But I know that some people need things like um, Ambien and things like that to sleep and to uh, deal with the issues that they have. But I'm encouraging you guys, if, if, if you suffer from insomnia, the inability to sleep or to stay asleep once you've gone to sleep, to uh, give me your comments here. What do, what do you think about it? What's your opinion? Uh, what works? What have you found that works? What don't work, you know? Because all research can say is uh, what they've come, come up with with the studies that they've had, you know, and it may or may not work for you. And so I just wanted to share some of uh, what I learned today about it for the simple fact that uh, I came across it today through the social media pages. And sometimes I have a difficulty uh, sleeping once I uh, get in the bed for the night. Sometimes I, I really do. Sometimes it's hard for me to fall asleep. But what I do realize when, when I have those nights like that is that I have probably uh, been on the internet uh, prior to getting ready to lay down. I have probably sit here and consumed about two or three cups of coffee coffee before I lay down. And also, 
I also realized that when I do lay down, things have began to bombard my mind. So things uh, throughout the day begin, begin to start rushing back, or maybe I find myself anxious or, or uh, worrying about something. And so that does uh, affect our ability to fall asleep or to stay asleep once we uh, go to sleep. Another thing that research says that could be helpful is to um, don't wait to right before bedtime before you remove electronics and uh, other media from your mind. So like games and television and surfing the net and stuff like that. An uh, hour or two before bedtime, they're saying... Uh, remove yourself from those things and maybe try things like breathing techniques and meditation and a uh, mild exercise, a warm bath and things like that. So it's debriefing uh, your body a couple hours before you know that you're wanting to go to bed to just kind of let uh, your mind worry about whatever it's going to worry about and uh, let your uh, body begin to uh, slow down and relax and debrief the day. So they're saying a couple hours before you know you're wanting to go to bed, uh, this is the time you need to take to do the worrying and to be anxious and uh, deal with whatever it is that uh, shows up when you lay down for bed. So I thought that was some good information. If, if you guys have any suggestions out there, I'd love to hear them. Even if you're catching me uh, on the replay, I'd like to hear it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to SoundCloud so that you can get these contact, uh, contents of these videos on demand. Especially for you guys that miss us on live uh, here at 10 p.m. every night. So I'll be looking for your comments and your suggestions and your home remedies and treatments for uh, insomnia to help uh, some of the viewers that have these issues with insomnia. We appreciate you, Miss Wright, for sharing your ideas on that. So with that being said, we're going to call it a night, and I hope that you all rest well. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you. I am your host, and Tricia Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. I'll see you right here again tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Good night, everybody.